Welcome back to Dr. Sellers Educate. We are happy that you are continuing on your journey towards CNE success. We do want to start a little bit different in this episode. We're going to start with three tips to help you on your way. The first tip is to make sure you print out your study worksheet. There is a link in the description right here on this as part of this episode. So make sure you print that out before you come and show up for every single episode. That's going to help you stay focused so that you can walk away with a clear path for what next steps you're gonna take on your journey, all right? Tip number two, purchase your resources, okay? Have those in front of you so that you can ensure that you are reviewing the most thorough content to help you close your knowledge gaps as you continue on your journey. All of our content, whether that is our webinar, our YouTube episodes, our podcast episodes, and any of our programs that we offer, whether it's our live review or self-paced course, all map back to the content and the resources that we recommend. All right, you can find those in the description as well. Tip number three is to follow along in your study workbook. Go ahead and print that off. If you haven't purchased it yet, we want you to use it because it will maximize the number of hours that you have. We know that time is limited. And as educators, we're really busy. So we want you to stay focused following your seven-week study plan. That is the goal of the study workbook. And as a bonus, you can go ahead and check out the discount code in our description where you can receive a 20% discount for joining our community. That is our monthly boot camp. In 2023, we are launching a new version. Not only will you have a worksheet, but you will also have specific content and practice questions to help you focus month after month, okay? So our goal is that we will keep you all engaged as part of our monthly boot camp as we move forward and helping you cross that finish line of success, right? We want you to schedule that exam. We want to celebrate your success as you reach the finish line to achieve success as a nurse educator. All right, so for this episode, we are continuing on our journey, looking at content that is related to educational learning theory, specifically focusing on behaviorism. All right, so the content that you are going to be using to help support you in closing your knowledge gaps is going to be chapter 14 in Billings and Halstead's seventh edition, I'm sorry, sixth edition, and also Dr. Caputi's um, CNE review book, second edition. If you have not purchased Dr. Caputi's review book, because perhaps you're taking the CNE, CL, that's okay. Just know that you have plenty of content in Billings and Halstead, chapter 14, to help you close your knowledge gaps here. So with behaviorism, what you want to remember with all of our educational learning theories that we're focusing on is that the goal is that we are able to connect the relationships of the concepts that are described by the different theories that we're talking through and the actual learning process to include the teaching strategies as well as the um, interactive activities, evaluation methods that we are using with our students and our learning experiences that we're designing for them with every interaction that we have. Okay, so that is the goal. And then next, we want to go ahead and jump into that practice question. So let's take a look at this one. And if you want to pause the video and come back, you can feel free to do that. This one says that the principles of behaviorism are integrated into learning objectives in the classroom, learning resource center, and clinical settings. So which statement most closely describes the tenets of this learning theory? All right, so we're going to come back to this question. But you can see you have four choices here. For those of you that are listening on audio, we will read out the four options when we get, after we finish the content, we'll come back to the actual questions and also talk about the best um, choice out of the four options that we have. Now let's jump into some of these key concepts related to the behavioral learning theory. The first category that we want to look at is learning. So what does this specific theory say about learning? Well, first it says that we are focusing on the changes in observable behavior. Okay, so that's what the learner's focus is. It is they, our individual learner is looking at what behaviors they see in the clinical setting and the didactic setting. And then they are making a decision based on the behaviors that they see about what their practice would be. Okay, so it's practices that they observe and prior learning experiences that are going to determine 
what practice decisions they make and other behaviors that they choose to make as well. Second are those teaching strategies. Remembering that um, one good example is gonna be through learning contracts, right? So those are our syllabi where we are describing for our students, what are the expectations we have of them related to their behavior? How many assignments, specifically graded assignments are they gonna have? What is the What are the rubrics that we're using in the classroom? What are the expectations related to the start of the class and the end of the class? If it's an online class, how many times per week do they have to have interaction with their colleagues and with us as their faculty? All right, so those are some examples of the teaching strategies or really the expectations and the guidelines we would use tied back to the behavioral learning theory. And then our third category is evaluation methods. So what type of ways should we evaluate and assess that learning has happened based on the behavioral learning theory? We should develop simulation activities, skills demonstrations. Those are opportunities that our students are going to have where we will give them feedback and positive reinforcement about the practices that they have chosen when they are providing patient care. All right, so those are some of the key concepts that are related to the behavioral learning theory, specifically those teaching strategies, what we need to be mindful of, um, how we evaluate students that correlates or maps back to the behavioral learning theory. Remember that whenever you sit for the CNE exams that many of the questions will be tied to application. The goal is that NLN is able to evaluate and really validate that we are competent as nurse educators and that we indeed have reached a high level of competency as an expert nurse educator. All right, remembering also that certification is the marker professionalism. So invest the time, make the commitment. Um, we know that it can be challenging to carve out 100 hours or so as part of your seven week study plan, that's included in the study workbook, but we've broken it down in a way that is manageable, okay, over time. Remember that we are here to support you every single step of the way. And when it comes to the, the time that you have available, we wanna be able to maximize that. And we describe that in our seven week study plan. All right, so as we wrap up for this snapshot, let's take another look at our practice test question. All right, so this is where we're gonna read the four choices. So again, the question was, we have principles of behaviorism that are integrated into learning objectives in the classroom, learning resource center, and clinical settings. So which of these four statements are gonna most closely describe tenets of the behavioral learning theory? A, the learner needs to be active in creating a structured network of information. B, students are motivated by extrinsic rewards and not individually responsible for learning. C is learning occurs from passive as well as deliberate observation of behavior. And D is reflection on the negative consequences of behavior influences limited repetition. Okay, so which of these statements are most, are most closely tied to the concepts that we've talked about related to behavioral learning theory? All right, so let's take a look at the correct choice. So if you chose B, students are motivated by extrinsic rewards and not individually responsible for learning, you are correct. Option A is more closely tied to cognitive learning theory and option C and D are most closely tied to social learning theory. All right, so we hope that this information has been helpful as you seek to continue on your journey towards closing your knowledge gaps. Until next time, remember you can reach us at info at drsellerseducate.com and you can review all of the services and programs that we offer on our website, drsellerseducate.com. We hope that you have enjoyed this snapshot and it has helped you close knowledge gaps perhaps that you knew that you had or discovered new ones and that's okay too. You're gonna go back to again, chapter 14 in Billings and Halstead and appendix A in Dr. Caputi's review book if you have that resource available. Okay, until next time, have a great one, everybody.